Unfortunately, due to economic pressures, it's now two and a half pennies for my thoughts. For you though, just click on the ad that ran before this video. That's right, it's another inflation episode, and today I want to be looking into the issue of practicality. How bad is inflation really? I mean, is the Federal Reserve burning down the house because they saw a spider? Or are there anti-inflationary measures that most people agree are probably going to trigger a recession actually warranted? Simply put, if $10 can buy you half the stuff it could a week ago, well, unless your wages double in that period, that's going to be a problem. How big a problem? Let's get into it. First thing, wages are going up, but they're not keeping up with the currency's falling value. With pay raises trailing inflation, the buying power of workers' take-home pay has been shrinking despite historically tight labor conditions. Real average hourly earnings, that means inflation adjusted, fell 3.6%. Yes, despite historic labor shortages and wage increases, Americans have collectively gotten the opposite of a raise, a lower. The fact that your money can't go as far and you aren't being adequately compensated for that cost means that we're all over here making quality of life reductions. We can't afford to live the way we used to because the money isn't going as far anymore. Now this fits perfectly into the second major inflationary problem we're looking at, a lack of savings. Now this one is a really one-two puncher. First, if costs go up 10% and you get a 2% raise, congratulations, you now have a few extra ones to use for toilet paper. You're going to end up saving less money because of this or even having to dip into your savings to keep up with the expanding costs. Now at the same time all that's happening, in the background, all of the cash that you've been saving over the years is slowly losing its value. Now interestingly enough, depending on your position, this could either be a problem or a huge feature. Let's flip that coin for a sec. If inflation is eating away at your savings, it's also maybe helping you. I mean, rampant inflation has done more for the student debt crisis than all these Joe Biden debt cancellations combined. Oh, I owe you $100,000? Glad you locked in that price a few years ago. As time passes, that $100,000 is becoming less and less valuable. If you owe a whole bunch of money to someone, you're hoping that the Federal Reserve will just keep running these cash printers and shrinking your debt obligation into smaller and smaller amounts. Now, of course, I gotta couch this section a bit, because inflation in and of itself doesn't make debts easier to pay off. It's more the fact that it makes it easier and easier to come by larger and larger sums of money in order to pay off that previously locked in price. So maybe your raises aren't keeping up inflation, but they're still raises. At the same time, money owed and the interest rates on it were set a long time ago. Now the final negative to inflation is that people well, they're just making cuts to their purchasing because, again, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this yet, cash isn't going as far as it used to. If prices are going up faster than your income, you're not going to be able to afford as much as you used to be able to. Now that means less buying things, and the American economy is underpinned by the same people buying more and more things. You know, growth. Those guys start buying less and less, sales go down, and welcome to Recessionville, population, you. So that's the long and short of the immediate problems associated with inflation. Which brings us to a larger question that I posed at the top of this episode. Are the Federal Reserve's tightening policies worth it? Now, in an ironic twist, the Federal Reserve's solution sounds remarkably similar to the problem itself. Alright, we're going to take a bunch of money out of the economy so that people buy less, unemployment goes up, hopefully suppressing wages, therefore bringing down costs and demand across the economy. See previous episode with a link at the end for details on how little an exaggeration that summary is to the actual plan. So you probably are thinking to yourself, 
Well, we took the scenic route, but we ended up in the exact same place. A recession, less consumption, and getting paid less in real wages. At least with inflation, we get the fun of making it rain in the meantime. Well, that's where a final point comes in. You see, inflation doesn't end on its own. In fact, it gets more and more ingrained in society the longer you let it simmer. If people start anticipating an annual 10% price increase, well, there's never going to be a reason to stop doing that. Maybe you try your luck and bump it up to 12% next year. On the flip side, money becomes toxic to hold on to, so people start dumping it as soon as they earn it, pushing up demand for anything but cash, leading to, again, price increases. Now, the goal of the Federal Reserve policy in this case is, instead of waiting and hoping for inflation to burn itself out, blitz the markets with a painful period of tightening that the bureaucrats are in control of. Then we get back on track to that sweet, sweet low inflation growth. Now, the main difference between the problem and the solution here appears to be who's in the driver's seat. We could either watch the wildfire go wild and hopefully burn itself out, or we could do a controlled burn and get back to growing again. Now, not everyone is a big fan of this controlled burn strategy, with some economists proposing maybe we fight fire with not fire. Now I'm going to be going over alternative proposals for fighting inflation in the next episode. And fair warning, America has a long and very weird history of regulating inflation, including America's surprisingly recent go-to strategy of capping prices and sales for goods. See how that shook out on the next episode of That's All I Have to Say About That. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my content. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe, ring that bell, and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.